Now, what do we see today? We see a church, the Catholic Church, the biggest institution on earth, the biggest religion on earth. I know Islam is bigger than Christianity, but I think if you compare Sunni to Catholic, it's pretty close. Maybe Sunni's overpassed it. But when you talk about a 2,000-year-old institution known not only for its music and its art and its architecture, but for its evangelization, evangelizing, evangelizing places as far away as the Philippines and North and South America, Africa, all these places. It was a force to be reckoned with, but what we have seen since the 1960s, and this is in my book, Infiltration, I go through decade by decade, beginning in the 1840s, all the way up to our own decade, and show the compromises, show the decline, and I tell you what, we all know it. It's the elephant in the room that no one will talk about in the contemporary church, and that is, since the 1960s, the church has been in demographic freefall. Demographic freefall. There's a a section in the book, Infiltration, that shows the number of baptisms, the number of adult converts, the number of priests, the number of women religious, all of it's down, 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 down. Down and to the right. If this were a business and they were putting up these numbers quarterly and annually and by the decade, everyone would have to be fired. It's a complete disaster. And yet, we wrongly sit around and think, well, we're in the springtime of evangelization and you know, the JP2 generation is going to turn it around and B16 is going to turn it around. And now it's been seven years of Pope Francis and we realize, no, we're in continued decline. Things do not look good. And the problem is, and our numbers, by the way, since the election of Pope Francis are down even more. You look at seminarian and vocation numbers in the last seven years, down and to the right. Decrease. Why is that? Because the man in the white cassock, in the white zucchetto, Pope Francis in Rome, is teaching things that are contrary to the Catholic faith. For example, that the death penalty is inadmissible when, in fact, the Old Testament, Moses, and St. Paul in the New Testament, and most importantly, the second person, the Trinity, Jesus Christ, all teach that the death penalty is admissible in certain cases. Here we have the teaching that he signed with a Muslim imam that God wills the plurality and diversity of many religions. Not true. Not good. And we just have the continued barrage of confusing statements that come not in official statements, but on interviews on an airplane, such things as, who am I to judge? We also have Amoris Laetitia, in which we have this footnote, fuzziness, confusion, can the divorced and remarried receive Holy Communion under certain cases with pastoral accompaniment. The received tradition, new tradition, by the world's bishops is yes, we are going to do that. And now we have this corona crisis in which even before governments and doctors asked us, churches all over the world, dioceses, even entire nations shut down public worship the public holy sacrifice of the Mass. So yes, we are in decline. And I fear, I truly do fear, that in the words of the Alta Vendita, the Pope, whoever he may be, will never come to the secret societies. But that pontiff, like the greater part of his contemporaries, will be necessarily imbued with the Italian and humanitarian principles which we are about to put into circulation. It's almost as if the Alta Vendita, written back in the 1800s, knew this day would come. And the reason I made this video is it's basically 
a vindication of this thesis because we have the Freemasons themselves in their magazine standing up, full standing ovation and saying, Pope Francis is doing exactly what we want him to do. Bravo. He's signing the documents and doing the ecumenical gestures. And let's not forget the Pachamama idols. Setting up idols, Amazonian idols, in the house of God? Last October. Here we have a Pope promoting religious diversity, downplaying Catholic distinctives, downplaying sacraments, and highlighting and promoting world religions. Even this past week, in the corona crisis, he called on everyone of all their religious traditions to pray for God to help the world with this corona crisis. That's good. We need to pray to the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But it does no good for false uh, adherence to false religions to pray to their false gods. Go read the 12 minor prophets. Go read Isaiah. Go read Jeremiah. Those gods are fake gods. They can do nothing to help mankind. As it says in the Psalms, the gods of the nations are demons. So why pray to Shiva or the elephant head god for an end of corona? No good. Nothing. Does nothing. It's, in fact, it's a mortal sin because the first commandment is you shall have no other gods before me. You should not worship idols. This is the first commandment. So we can't tell people who are idolaters to go and pray and worship their idols for an end of Corona. This doesn't work. No good. So infiltration, has it happened? I think it has happened. Oh, I have a little guest here. Speaking of infiltration. Hey, sweetie, you mean to fix your doll? Yeah. All right. Can I fix it in five minutes? You want to say hi to everybody? Say hello. <laughs> okay. Love you, babe. I'll see you in a little bit. This is what happens when you do live videos. The infiltration, according to my research, what I think is that we are now in the period of great decline. I don't think Pope Francis is a Freemason. I do believe there are Freemasons in the Vatican. Card-carrying, lodge-attending Freemasons working the Vatican. I do believe that is the case. But I don't think Pope Francis is a Freemason. But I do believe that people who got him to where he is, for example, the St. Gallen Mafia, those cardinals and bishops and archbishops who met in St. Gallen, Switzerland, which has close ties to Aleister Crowley and the religion that he founded, I do believe that that Gnostic, Freemasonic, diabolic influence is happening in the church. And yet, I'll close with this, I'm a Catholic. I'm a Catholic all the way to the center of my heart. And I don't imp uh, intend on leaving. I don't want to be Peter and say, I would never deny you, Lord, and then gives me the three, the, before the cock crows three times. By his grace, I intend never to leave. I believe it. I'm in. I'm doing this for that little girl, my daughter, who just came in, and all my kids. We have to stay and resist and fight. It's not the first time we've had a bad pope. I personally believe this is the worst pontificate we've ever experienced because of the dogmatic confusion. And I do believe that we will see a renewal of our faith, a renewal of the Catholic Church. I just think it's decades off. But of course, we also believe in miracles. Anything could happen. This is why we should pray and fast.